Hi, I'm Rohit Talwar from Fast Future, here in Munich with Huawei. But we thought we'd start here in the sun before we head out there. I'm really getting ready to look at the inspirations and innovations that will be shared, see how the industry is gearing up to help businesses, governments and societies deal with the challenges of greening, of accelerating change and innovation in a world of digital transformation. And I'm here with Michael Ray, Channel Director for Huawei of their Digital Solar Division. And Michael, what we're seeing right now is a massive growth of in, in interest in solar farms and solar generation. What are some of the features that are driving that right now? You know, solar is going to be one of the most important technologies in order to get us to carbon net zero. Um, you know, as well as wind, potentially nuclear, and obviously the other technologies that we have in place as well. But solar will definitely be one of the, the major technologies in getting us there. Michael, tell us a little bit about some of the technical challenges operators face when they're installing at this kind of scale. Yeah, so at, at utility scale, you know, you're looking at the lifetime of a, a solar PV plant being maybe 25, 30, maybe even longer years. Um, so you need to invest in a technology that you know is going to be reliable, first and foremost, that you know um, is going to be low in terms of operational maintenance costs. And they're the things that Huawei tend to focus on when we're designing our technology, as well as, of course, you know, maximizing the amount of energy yields you can get from your PV uh, farm. One of the things that caught our eye is this development from DAS Energy of flexible solar panels. Now, what we know is that many buildings weren't built with solar energy in mind, so they have interesting structures on the roof that a conventional solar panel couldn't fit on. Or the structural integrity of their roof can be impacted by drilling into that roof, or the roof may not be able to hold the weight of a traditional solar panel. So these guys have developed a, a flat layered flexible solar panel that is significantly lower in weight than conventional ones and that can be adapted to the shape uh, and size of different structures. Uh, we, we produce uh, PV panels which are based on conventional silicon cells, uh, but they are based on, uh, on uh, the model design is based on composite uh, materials, which allows us to produce panels uh, which are uh, lightweight and, and semi-flexible. So we're talking here about the weight of 3.3 uh, kilogram per square meter. Uh, which enables us to, to address applications of uh, big industrial roofs, for example, where you have uh, static issues and, and uh, limitations. Yeah. Now what we're seeing is a massive growth in both the number of solar arrays being delivered, but also the scale of those solar arrays. With that comes the challenge of keeping them clean, and we're seeing a variety of different solutions, like the one you see here behind me, which is both flexible and solar powered so it can keep those panels clean and on a permanent basis. And then if we walk over here, what we see is another little innovative solution, which is the use of robotic technology to perform the same function. So I'm here with Jean Semama, the CEO of Ecopia, the company that provides these technologies. Jean, tell me a little bit about the benefits of using these kinds of technologies and some of the underlying technologies that enable that? So, first of all, the, this technology is designed to make a very frequent cleaning on solar panels. Uh, we are making a, a dry clean, so we are not using any water, we are not taking any resource of the solar site. Uh, so we have our own uh, solar panel in order to charge uh, the robots on a, night, on a daily basis. The robots are cleaning uh, at night so that we are not interfering to any of the production of the site and whenever you do that frequent enough you don't need water but if you do that uh, with long delays between cleaning or long gaps then you're going to need to use a more aggressive approach for cleaning the solar panels because then water and dust are mixing and creating dust and this is much more difficult to remove so the concept is to really have a very frequent uh, cleaning we are doing that uh, on a nightly basis and then you maintain your solar site cleaning and at top performance for uh, around the year. So that, that's, that's the concept. To enable that, we have uh, communication systems uh, that are residing on the cloud uh, that are operating uh, our full fleet of uh, robots uh, worldwide. So we have uh, tens of thousands of units already operational. 
and everything is controlled uh, by the cloud. We don't need anybody on the site to start uh, the operation of the robot. And we know by uh, weather station that we are uh, insta installing on the site what's the current uh, weather condition and whenever it changes, we may decide or the cloud may decide uh, by itself to return all units to, uh, uh, for, for docking so that uh, they are safe. Our main idea is to um, produce containers which are fully equipped with all the bakery needs and we produce uh, fresh, local, um, tasty bread for mainly um, the Global South region and we use our solar energy um, to um, use our as electricity for um, all the equipment we have and the um, solar panels they are placed on the rooftop of our container and the container basically can stay or can be put everywhere in the global south where there's enough sun but not enough electricity for a normal bakery store. We, with our own hands, we built our first containerized bakery uh, here in, in Stuttgart where we're based, sent it off to the Congo, installed it and uh, pretty much uh, created a, a boom. Uh, people came running because our bread was so, uh, so popular. And uh, what surprised us a lot was um, all the, the women who came to our bakery uh, and wanted to sell our bread. I can show you a picture. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, these uh, women in the Congo, we have more than 100 uh, women who come every morning to fill their baskets with bread and then they spread out all around the, the city of Kinshasa and uh, sell this bread and that's how they get their income. So it's, it's a great uh, women empowerment project as well, which we didn't even think about in the beginning. But uh, now we're, uh, we're striving to, uh, yeah, to, to, to implement this distribution system with every solar bakery that we install. And a few things have really stood out for me as we walked around the show. The first is how seriously the industry is now taking its responsibility to help others drive down their energy footprint, drive down their emissions, but also drive down its own footprint at the same time. We're seeing a massive response to the demand for solar as energy prices rise, and the industry is in a desperate hurry to scale up its manufacturing capacity, but also there's a challenge of scaling up the installation capacity because of the exponential growth in demand we've seen recently. Another thing that we're seeing a lot of focus on is the efficiency with which we can convert the energy generated by solar arrays into usable AC energy in the home or in the grid. And the final thing is we're seeing lots of really interesting ventures as we've walked around the holes. And the standout one for me was something called Solar Bakery, who are creating these uh, container-based solar-powered trucks that have a bakery inside them that can be taken to places around the world with high levels of solar energy but high levels of poverty.